What's up everybody and welcome back to another video from Scalar Learning and today we are talking about the PSAT. Now if you're watching this video you likely recently took your PSAT and are just now getting back your score report taking a look and we're probably thinking what do I make of all these numbers what do I make of everything in this score report I'm here to help you navigate this document. This right here is a sample score report from the College Board so we're going to go through it and first thing that's going to pop out when we get to this next page is the total score. So of course this is the main score and this score is out of 1520 in contrast with the regular SAT which is actually out of a total of 1600. The first question that might pop up if you see your score on the PSAT is what would I get on the real SAT if I took it tomorrow? Even though this score is only out of 1520, the College Board will tell you that a 960 here would mean that you would get an actual 960 on the real SAT. Essentially what they're saying is that the PSAT is an accurate predictor of what you'd actually receive on the real SAT. Now if you think about this question mathematically like I do, since there is a difference of 80 points in the total score, a proportionate score could be determined by multiplying the score by 1.05. So if I took this score of 960 and multiplied it by 1.05, I would roughly get 1,010. The next thing you're gonna notice is the subscores for the evidence-based reading and writing as well as the math score. So this is gonna be really interesting because it's not only gonna give you a score, but it's gonna tell you your percentile. And what does percentile mean? Well, here it says 31st percentile for evidence-based reading and writing and 69th percentile for math. The percentile is where you rank amongst other students also taking the PSAT. So for example, if you got a 31st percentile ranking, that means you scored higher than 31% of all other test takers. Likewise, on the math, the 69th percentile means you scored higher than 69% of the test takers in the math section. These subscores are really important in terms of informing what you need to focus on and perfect while you gear up for the real SAT. And it's very common that if you do proper preparation and study hard, you can jump your score from the PSAT to the real SAT substantially. On the next page, we'll notice something very interesting, which is the NMSC index. This is your key to applying and hopefully getting a National Merit Scholarship. So what is a National Merit Scholarship? A National Merit Scholarship is awarded to a select few of college hopefuls and if you actually make it past the finalist round and receive one of these scholarships you can get $2,500 towards your college education. Moreover it's an incredible stamp of approval when you are indeed applying to colleges. If you're wondering what index score you need to qualify for a National Merit Scholarship here is the table and it's important to note that it depends on which state you live in. For example if you look at California it's on the higher end of what score is necessary and you need a two 222 whereas if you live in a state like Alaska that's on the lower end and you only need a index score of 213. Just a quick note you're only able to apply based on the index you receive as a junior in high school. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I wish you the best of luck in your SAT preparation process. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.